I had a gentleman contact me, and he had a photograph of uh, the actual uh, Hawkins 50 caliber rifle that uh, Jim Bridger carried on an expedition back in 1866. And uh, it's a beautiful rifle, and uh, that's I've scaled it to the size of uh, the gentleman's uh, that's carrying it here, the uh, Jim Bridger character that I've got here. I've scaled it to his size, and so now I'm just going to uh, reproduce that, but not. I don't know if I'll do that today or what. Time to play with some play. Okay, I'm uh, putting the wood on the uh, base and uh, I'm, I'm not quite sure how I'm going to do this yet. Um, that's too thin. Uh, that's perfect. Anyway, I'm, I'm talking while I'm trying to think. And that doesn't work out too well. <laughs> anyway, I've got these fondue sticks. And what I do is I drill a hole into the uh, wood. And then I need to anchor them, so I just drive the uh, piece of wood right into the uh, base or the uh, fondue into the base and uh, and just cover the hole with a little clay. Now I gotta be careful with how much detail comes out in these. Uh, these are gonna be hard to pull the mold out of and uh, so I gotta figure out the best place to put these. Yeah, that might be the best place for that one. Okay, I'm, I'm sorry, my, I forgot to turn on the camera while I was doing this. I got several twigs on the ground that I've uh, put on the ground. And uh, I'm just filling in under them because I can't have big undercuts on the, uh, the base. Let me see if I can... So I've got to... Uh, do some filling in underneath the uh, twigs so that they can make a mold of the twigs on the base without uh, having to do a lot of super undercuts. And I've put a few rocks under this base or under this piece of wood because um, there would be rocks up in the high country and uh, I've got, I'm trying to think while I'm talking and Okay, there we go. Like I said, I got to have all this filled in so they can pull the mold off of the uh, clay or, and of, off the wax that they would make of it from the mold. 
I don't want to get too much stuff on the on the base, but then again, I gotta have enough to make it interesting. If you put too much, everybody's gonna be looking at the base and not the sculpture. And uh, you don't want that. But even the rocks have to be castable. Is that even a word? <laughs> okay, I'm going to continue filling underneath the uh, sticks. And uh, we'll go from there. Now these are going to have jagged edges on them. These two pieces of wood here. And that's where the wood has been broken. I want to keep that because that shows that the tree is broken while it, when it fell. And uh, I've put it on the base in such a way that it'll be easy for the mold to be taken away from it. If I had to put them real close, it'd be a lot harder if you had it like this break was up this close to that break. And uh, they would have a hard time pulling that out. So you got to constantly think about what is going to be castable and what's not going to be castable. This, uh, the bronze of this piece is going to be very expensive no matter what I do. I just can't get away with it, but, uh, anyway. It is what it is. My mission is to make it less costly somehow. All right, I'm going to continue doing this because it's hard to it's hard to video this type of thing because it's hard to figure out where you're going to put your camera. And I'll be back in a few minutes. Yeah, I gotta anchor even the small ones. I don't want to overdo it on the uh, base with the uh, wood and I'm trying to make it look like it's haphazard so it doesn't look like it's been planned out even though it has been and I don't want it blocking his uh, ability to move okay I think the next thing I need to do is paint these uh, pieces of wood and I'll be right back with my paint and brush. Okay. Again, for those who aren't familiar with my videos, I uh, took a sample of clay to a local hardware store to match the color of the clay for this reason here uh, to make those things that don't look like the clay and make them look like the clay I'm doing this uh, paint dries it's a house paint it's an indoor house paint and uh, it's a flat matte finish so that it dries when it dries it looks just like clay it doesn't affect the casting of the piece in bronze 
it just makes it look like the clay so that when you take pictures of your finished clay because a lot of times you're not going to sell it until you sell it off the clay you're not going to be able to cast it unless you got a ton of money in your bank account which I don't so I've got to rely on selling my stuff uh, via emails or photographs of it or having it in a gallery and being displayed. And then people take orders off of the clay. So that's what I'm doing is taking away a question that might occur to a client. What is that? It's like the uh, super sculpty. I paint that to look like the clay. So I don't have blue part patches on here. And people ask me, why is that blue? And why is that kind of a grayish color? All right, that's going to have to do it for today. It's uh, taken me a while to figure out exactly where I'm going to put these pieces of wood and do it in such a way that I don't look like I'm boxing them in, but have it look like he's actually in a bit of scenery here. Yeah, kind of like a diorama. <laughs> but uh, I'm happy the way this turned out. Now, I've got some deep cuts or splits in the wood. I'm going to have to try to fill those in a little bit. Uh, I'll do that next time, this one especially. But I like that because it shows that the wood is dried and dead. All right, everybody. Have a great night. I'll see you uh, next time. Good night. If you like this video, please like and subscribe to my channel. It really would help me. Also, check out the link below this video. It will take you to a review of my nine instructional videos that could be very helpful to you if you're thinking of sculpting. Good night, everybody.